Hi, I'm Mike Nelsmoen with AFM and Engage Technologies. Today we're going to be going over the LX150 HMI menus and screens. We're going to be going through the different menus, screens, buttons, functions uh, to explain how the LX150 HMI works. On the work screen, you can see the work tab up here, we have our product name, AFM1. The, that relates to our product that we're going to be running with this machine. Uh, as you can see, there's also a counter, a target, and a bottles per minute readout up here. On the counter, this is how many cycles the machine has run. You can reset this counter by pushing the reset button. And now find out from zero how many times the machine has cycled. The target is our target value. So if we were currently we're going to set it up for 100 bottles. The, if I want to change the setting for 100 bottles to say 500 bottles, I can just set. 500, enter, exit, and now the machine will label 500 bottles and automatically stop. Bottles per minute, or BPM, is going to be a real-time feedout for the application and the bottles per minute that the sleeper is working at. This takes usually takes about 15 to 30 seconds, depending on the speed, to calculate the bottles per minute. The rest of the work screen has the alarm messaging so currently our PLC battery is low, so we'll need to replace the battery. And so it shows a message of the PLC battery low. To reset or to stop the buzzer happening, you can push the two buttons here. The other buttons on this screen are the screw. This is related to the timing screw to start and stop the timing screw. If there's an auxiliary device, the HPERF, you can tap this on or off to activate it. Same thing with the printer, brush downs, or auxiliary belt options on this machine. You can turn them on or off at this screen. The next screen we're going to talk about is the settings screen. The settings screen is going to be all the detailed settings for this machine and the container that we're going to be sleeping. Currently, we have product number one selected. There is a lock function on this screen. If I touch and hold the lock button for three seconds, it's going to automatically lock out screen for any kind of adjustments. This will help protect the data that's in there and the recipe screen that's in there so it can't be checked. To unlock the screen, again, touch and hold the lock button for three seconds. That's going to unlock it. Now I'm able to change the values. If I want to switch recipes to a different container or label, I can select the button and select my recipe. It's going to change the product name to AFM2, exit, and now my settings have automatically updated and changed on the machine. Recipe section selection screen is good to house different menus for different containers and the machine settings. Now we're gonna walk through the different functions on this machine on the settings screen. For number two, print, yes or no. Currently, we have print no. That means that we have, are using clear film. If we have print on our film, we're gonna select yes. What this is going to do is activate the print detection sensor to make sure that the print is properly placed on the cut and on the container itself. Next, we have the cut length. The cut length is going to be the cut length for the label. So by changing it, I can change the cut length that the machine knows to cut at. Print registration dwell is related to the print detect sensor and how long it's going to wait until it cuts. Meaning that once the print registration sensor picks up the clear area between the film, it will then dwell for 10 millimeters and then cut. This is key for setting up the machine. Uh, it is also helpful so if you have different cut lengths that you don't have to physically move the sensor on the machine, you can type in a number. The feeding time is related to the cycling of the machine. Currently, we are set at 450 milliseconds, which means that the machine will do one cycle in 450 milliseconds. If we change this to 500 milliseconds, now the machine will do one cycle every half a second for 500 milliseconds. Typically, we want to keep this value between 3 and 400 milliseconds. The faster we have this value, say we go to 150 milliseconds, the faster the machine has to work. If we don't need to work the machine this fast for one cycle, then we're going to save on the wear and tear on the machine. So with, again, with the feeding time, we want to stay between 3 and 400 milliseconds if the application is correct for it. On the band release delay, this is the timer and delay related to the product detect sensor. The product detect sensor is what is actually seeing the product as it goes into the machine and making the machine do the cycle to apply the label. We can use this timer in conjunction with the physical 
ruler on the product tech sensor to be able to adjust the machine's delay in order to apply the label on time. You can also see we have plus and minus 10, five, one to make gross movements in this band release delay, or I can type in a certain number if I have to move larger. Again, this is directly related to the product detect sensor. This sensor is a print detect sensor. This is what detects on printed film the clear area between the film impressions. The print registration sensor is related to the print registration well setting on the HMI screen. You can use the print registration well setting on the HMI screen to account for any offsets instead of physically moving the sensor up and down. This is a product detect sensor. This sensor detects the container as it passes underneath the machine. As you can see the photo eye registration there. This sensor is related to the band release delay. Once the sensor detects the container, band release delay will come in effect. So once the, again, once the sensor detects the bottle, it's going to delay the release of the sleeve for 500 milliseconds. On the bottom right hand corner, there's a next button we can hit. This will bring us to the second page of the machine settings. Now some settings on here are a direct relation to the rulers on the machine to get your center line. Other settings on here will adjust the speeds. For example, the head height, you can adjust the head height as a notepad and set that in. That'll relate to how high the machine is set to. The sensor position here, again, we can type in a number for whatever the ruler says for our bottle detect sensor. The application wheel position, we're gonna type in the number here that relates to the ruler on the application wheel height position. Application wheel speed, currently we have a range of 15 hertz to 80 hertz. The slower this is, 15 hertz, the slower the applicating wheels are going to move. The faster we have this set, the faster the application wheels are going to move. This number will be automatically changed with the recipe and the selection for the container and application. Conveyor speed is another notepad section where we can enter in a number. It's not going to change anything in the machine, but it can be used to reference back on your conveyor speed. If there's an option for another VFD, that is purchased with the machine, now the conveyor speed will work to adjust the speed of the conveyor. Timing screw speed number eight. This will adjust the timing screw and how fast the timing screw is moving. Again, we have a range from 10 to 60 seconds, 60 hertz. We can change the pitch of the containers related to the conveyor speed here. The auxiliary belt. If you have an auxiliary belt option purchased with the machine, you can control the auxiliary belt speed from this screen. Once you enter in all of these numbers, they're gonna be automatically saved into product number two. To select between products, I can select AFM1, I'm gonna change it, exit. As you can see, now our values all change with that recipe. If I want to go back, number two, I can select number two, and automatically go back to the values that we just punched in. Enter a new recipe, you can select our number, select the product, select the name of the product, AF3, enter, now it's going to give us a new recipe. From here, we can exit. As long as it has number three, we can enter in our values and it's going to automatically save this to that recipe. Next screen we have is the manual tab. Underneath the manual tab, we have buttons on here for the film and the cutter. The film feed up will activate the drive wheels to move the film up and the film feed down will activate the film to go down. The cutter, press and hold, will make one cycle of the cutter, and one cycle here will activate and do one cycle of the film and the cutter. We also have another detailed video with the film setup that will explain the cutter, the one cycle, don't get up and down. Last tab on here is the other tab. This other tab is going to relate to the secondary parameter settings menu as well as alarms, knife length angle adjust, and the PLC IO monitor. On the alarm messaging screen, we can see that we have the PLC battery low as again, it's giving us a message. We can look at the history of the messages throughout the machine and check that and the timestamps. We can also clear this if we need to. Knife angle adjust is related to the position of the blades on the cutter and the homing tab. Typically this is set factory set and will not need to be adjusted, however, We'll have another detailed video of knife offset.
PLC IO monitor is a handy way to diagnose issues or sensors with the PLC without having to go back to the electrical enclosure. So all of the X's are the inputs. We can go to next as the inputs. Next is the Y is the output. This is again, machine PLC telling the machine what inputs and output it is. For example, you see the stop button. If I push the stop button on the screen, you can see that the light goes on and off. The PLC is seeing that stop button being pressed. You can scroll through and see real time the IOs that are happening with the machine. The last one on here is a parameter setting for the secondary level user parameters. Type in the password, enter, enter. Now we get to the secondary parameter setting menu. We will have another detailed video to go through the secondary parameter screen menu. Thank you for watching the HMI setup on our LX150. If you have any more questions or want to watch more videos, please check out our YouTube channel or go to our website, afmsleeves.com.